Um, my question has to do with the, uh, with the wisdom of uh, uh, allocating public funds to religious education. Uh, I am a uh, supporter of religious education, uh, and I, I'm thankful that that opportunity exists. Um, but religious education uh, is by choice, and I'm wondering, uh, particularly with the harder economic times, what the rationale is in uh, the support of uh, religious education with public funds. In other words, I, I want to thank you personally. But I want to say also, as a public citizen, that the public should not, in my opinion, be forced to finance uh, religious education. Because one of, the, one of the primary purposes of religious education is to teach the Bible. And uh, we hear a lot of uh, uh, action and verbal uh, comments when, when that happens. Thank you. OK. First of all, you can applaud, you can uh, boo, you can do whatever you want. But I'll tell you this. It is not about religious education or not religious education. My philosophy is very simply this. It's all about the student. And the best location, the best place for that student to get an education is where that student should go. And that choice should be left up to the parents. Yeah. Having said that, every school that will really receive state funding will be a school that is accepted, their curriculum is accepted by the state of Maine and certified that they're providing an adequate education for the students in that school. Be it a technical school, be it a religious school, be it a private schools, be it an academy, be it a uh, uh, faith school, a, a, a school that has some religious overtones but a non-denominational. <clears throat> the way I look at it is not everybody learns the same way. And so we need to make sure that we provide the best opportunity. And one opportunity that I was trying to get to is Homeschooling. If, if the parent can provide a better education for their kids than the public schools, that's fine. To me, it's not about, they're not, we're not giving them money because they're teaching religion. We're going to give them money because they're teaching, they do a good job of teaching English, mathematics, STEM education, all the core curriculum courses of every other school in the state of Maine. And where does it stop? I was brought up in the 50s when there was no restrictions. We had choice in the state of Maine. Now, someone, I believe in about 1980, said we don't have choice. Let me tell you, the state of Maine, as, a, it, as far as it, we compare with the nation, I would say we're so-so. As a nation, we have fallen to 27th in the world. We're not even in the top 10. So we have been studying that. And I will tell you this, we all say parents should be more involved. Well, if parents need to be more involved, we've got to give them some choices and some responsibility. And we need to work with them to teach them on what's best for their kids. Some learn with, some are children are right brain, left brain, some learn with their hands. Others learn by visual. So we've got to get every possibility for every child to do the best they can do in this country. And I think if it's religious, so be it. Just quickly, the, the, the governor said real quick something that's important here. It's, it's not as though this is a novel idea. The law was changed in 1981, not 1881. Up until 1981, you could use public tuition dollars. School choice towns that tuition their kids to high schools could send those kids to religious schools in Maine until 1981, when the legislature and the then governor made a decision to outlaw it. So this is, and somehow, prior to 1981, we had public schools, 
the public schools serve all of our kids, the sky didn't fall. I mean, you know, this. It, I'm, I'm a little surprised at the kind of sense we're getting from people that somehow this is some revolutionary, earth-shaking idea. Until 1980, 81, this was how it was. You could publicly fund those schools. They were approved for tuition purposes. This didn't mean you could go and hang out a shingle and call yourself a religious school and get public funding. We have a long list of requirements that, that private schools that receive public funding <laughs> have to abide by, and we're not changing any of that except one line of statute that's about that long that says those schools can't be religious. They, these schools would have to meet every other criteria just as the governor said. So I would urge people to take a look at the bill, take a look at the statute when we get going on it, look at the history, and let's think about whether we're serious that kids should have the educational setting, access to the educational setting that's going to work best for them. That's what we're talking about. Thank you.